gamers today we're doing the final tier list for this patch it is the imperial civ tier list now there are news of the new patch coming in july but there's weeks until then so i figured out let's just finish this one and then in july i'll kind of update you guys where the civ tier list is but for now we're going to be talking about imperial civ tier list by the way just to just to clarify i've made a feudal civ tier list castle civ tier list and now we're gonna do imperial so what does that mean that doesn't mean how fast you can get in imperial that just means uh obviously that's a little bonus right but that means how good is the civ once you're imperial we're talking not necessarily when all the resources are drained but from the moment where you're both established on 100 plus workers and you're kind of fighting trading back and forth that's kind of the until super late game like that's kind of what we're talking about uh here so let's get started number one civ right now maybe that's going to change in the patch is the china chinese civ i don't think this is a surprise to anyone uh it is the strongest civ tier list or civ by far uh overall i would say in imperial now the reason why i say overall is because in my opinion it does have a counter but uh when you look at it objectively it is against all the civs in all the situation all the maps in imperial china is the best because of grenadiers and bombards plus they have omega walls they have good castles uh their their uh, food economy is actually really sick and you actually don't need like 60 70 workers with china in the late game you need about 40 on food which most civs need like 60 70 to fully support unit production but because they have a little bit more efficient uh, uh, food production with granaries uh, you need less workers and also you get that extra drop off on the resources so it allows you to create a big siege ball uh, they also have an upgrade in imperial that gives their villagers like extra efficiency regarding gathering so yeah china number one also another thing if you want to like really go in depth uh china has the most landmarks in the game so even if you kind of end up in some weird base trade situation um uh, they have an edge there too <clears throat> the number two civ that i would say uh that is imperial gods are definitely english so english you know it started off strong in feudal kind of went down in castle but in imperial if you can get there safely and if you can um kind of get to that stage where you're both somewhat split map english is an insane civ now english does lose to some other civs in imperial but it actually is a counter to china uh why it's a counter you, the only thing well the only thing uh what you need to do is when you play english versus china is you need to extend the game to the point where there's no gold on the map and then your farms will kick in in, in big time because the Chinese will run out of gold and you will never run out of gold because you have farms that give you gold. And while Chinese can trade, trading is not really a thing on most maps. And it's also a lot easier to prevent uh, uh, trading than it is to prevent just farming in general. And you can overwhelm Chinese with just bashing them insane amounts of horses, uh, knights and also trebuchets are really, really uh, good. So yeah. Versus other civs, especially in a split map scenario, your units get 50% attack speed uh, when they're near castles or towers. So that's obviously very good in, you know, mass armies, especially ranged units. It works on trebuchets as well. Their trebuchets are really good. They deal splash damage as well. So if you get like 10 trebuchets, you don't even have to target buildings. You just mow down everything. So yeah, they're really good. Uh, and that's why they're one of the best civs in imperial now we go from the top straight to the bottom baby the absolute trash civ uh it went from being probably even the best civ in castle age to d tier uh delhi is complete trash in imperial the upgrades take extremely long to upgrade um so even if you get imperial you're actually stuck in castle for like 15 to 20 minutes extra until your upgrades finish that's how long the upgrades take and overall it loses all its power um you know like tower elephants that are super op in castle 
the only thing that they get is crossbows on top of them they don't get anything else uh, they do get a uh, cavalry HP upgrade but it just takes so damn long that you just lose the game before that and also all the strategies in Bolding Delhi are to hit in castle so usually when you go into Imperial your can economy is not as good as other civs that also plays an important role but like even if you get through all the obstacles of like surviving 20 minutes in Imperial and then stabilizing you got all upgrades it's still not good so like maybe i would move it to c tier but it would still be the worst civ probably in imperial uh it sucks but there are some changes coming for Dell in the new patch so we'll see what that's gonna do and if something is going to change now these other civs are very hard for me to actually rate and i think these are these are very clear to me uh, in my opinion, the other civs, they, they kind of depend a lot on the matchup. They kind of depend a lot on the map. I, I'm trying to think. It's really hard. All these civs have their benefits and they have their downsides as well. So with that being said, I, I'll put Mongols actually in A tier. Um, the reason for that is Mongols have extra upgrades for their units. I don't know if you guys are aware or not. Uh, but they have upgrades for extra units that involve uh, higher HP on Siege, higher movement speed on Siege, they require stone. They have... Um, basically any upgrade you have in the game pretty much can be upgraded an extra level with Mongols. And their Siege, aka Springholds, can be upgraded another time to give them extra range, which actually gives the highest range Springles in the game are Mongol Springles, not Rus. A Rus got nerfed a while ago, and Mongol can dominate Siege in the late game. The downside of Mongols is they don't have walls, uh, but there's also a possibility of actually making a wonder in a one-on-one -on -one game, believe it or not, with Mongols, because they don't require stone for it. Uh, Mongol trade is also very, very good, and... Because you have infinite stone income pretty much with white stupa and trading, you can build billion bombard towers. And bombard towers are incredibly, incredibly powerful. So most of the games that I feel like that Mongols are playing, they're kind of ending in castle because of the pressure of the Mongols and they kind of force you to stay in castle. But when Mongol does reach Imperial, it is very good. And most people I feel like don't know about it because the game just doesn't, it just doesn't get there. Uh, also, their bombards are very good because they get the, you know, like I said, the bonus 10% uh, movement speed and, and uh, more health upgrade as well. So, I would say they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Uh, now, the next Civ we will be discussing is... Uh, I'm going to have to go with Rus in A tier as well. Uh, Rus might be... I don't know if it's better against Mongols and... I'll tell you why. Rus was an S tier easy. Clean. Easy. 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 And then their Springles got nerfed. They used to have the highest range Springles in the game. And they got nerfed. And now they only get like 0 0.5 tile uh, uh, range upgrade for their Springles. That's like bonus. Which is basically nothing. They do have Stealthy. Right? Which is... They're very, very strong. The thing is, Streltsy lose to Grenadiers from China, Streltsy lose to Nest of Bees, they lose to Bombards, so they lose to the Chinese Siege Grenadier combo, and they also lose to English. They lose to Trebuchets due to their range, uh, just kind of Streltsy Siege comp, uh, and they also, the, one of the easiest counter to Streltsy is just Longbows, because they completely outrange them. They have the attack speed, so if you if you ever enter like Rus versus English battle, English should win just because of the attack speed and that their unique unit actually counters Streltsy. Now, what are the benefits of Rus? Well, Streltsy mow down pretty much any melee units. Um, that like doesn't matter if they're knights or men at arms, they will completely destroy everything. Even hand cannoneers, they're gonna completely destroy them. Um, and they are a sieve that has insane amounts of gold income because usually you get the relics uh, in castle with Rus or if you go high trade house you can build hunting cabins everywhere and you get a lot a lot a lot of passive gold so most of the time when you play Rus you don't even mine out all the gold veins while your opponent is super super struggling for gold so that's also a bonus for them 
But regarding their actual power, uh, like I said, very good, but China and English both kind of beat it in the late game. While Roos does pretty well versus other civs. Um, another thing that's kind of downside for Roos is they don't have stone walls, so any kind of late game battles, they can, you know, their walls can be broken and a lot of cavalry run bys and so on and so forth. The next civ we will be talking about is Abbasid. Um, Abbasid is actually not bad at all in Imperial. Um, it has a different playstyle than the other civs, I would say. And I, and also, like, these last three civs, I would say, play quite a bit different than, than the first four. The first four are trying to keep the, their, their death bolt combined, right? They're trying to use their siege, their towers, their keeps, and kind of push forward. While the other four civs play completely differently and the problem is that is not playable on every map right if you play a map that's like mongolian heights or hill and dale that's not really possible so it makes the civs a lot worse but uh abbasid has insanely powerful uh infantry in the late game their spears are really good and they basically work just like french and hre they work on overwhelming your opponent so this is where it's kind of hard to rate them because technically, regarding their power, they're B tier, but they do have a lot of potential in completely overwhelming their opponents. So I'm going to try to find a middle ground and rate them B tier. Camel Archers actually, uh, in my opinion, are better than uh, if you face like a Chinese player or English or uh, Rus. Camel, mass Camel Archers can actually beat their unique units like Streltsy, yada yada. The problem is they don't really have any like strong hitters. Like China has Siege, English has the attack speed aura and, and a bunch of range units, Rus has Streltsy and Siege as well. Abbasid just has Camel Archers, which they're extremely cheap in the late game. They only cost food and wood, which makes them great. They're very mobile, but like I said, if you play on a map where there's not a lot of mobility allowed, it's very hard to do damage with them, even though they're great in a straight up fight. And they're actually one of the best uh, unique units in the game and just units in general, because they're very easy to, to mass produce. Abbasid economy in the late game is great, but if you ever enter into those narrow choke fights against these top four civs, you're not gonna do too, too great. They have Culverin, they do have Culverin, but uh, you know, Mongols have Springles with extra range. Uh, Rus has Springles with extra range, a lot of gold. These have trebuchets and these have bombards with extra range, so I would say B tier. And also, by the way, Abbasid trading is pretty good in the late game if it ever reaches that point because it gives you a second resource. Next civ that we will be discussing is French. Uh, I would say French is... it drops off quite hard. Now, I want to re-emphasize this. I would say the only civ that is actually terrible in Imperial is Delhi. Like, actually terrible. All the other civs, the only reason why I'm putting French this low, realistically I would probably put HRE French next to Abbasid, but just for the sake of... Actually, no, we can do that. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna put French next to Abbasid. Um, I think that French is... Um, no, I, no, I can't actually. No, I can't. The reason, the reason for that is French heavily, heavily re relies on cavalry. Now, just like I said with Abbasid, they require, uh, you know, open space to harass with camel archers and stuff like that. The problem with French is they require the same thing, but they're melee units. So their cavalry is the, the, the uh, popular one, but they're melee units. So it kind of makes them worse in these kinds of situations, even though their knights are, are super, super strong. Their landmarks in Imperial aren't that great. The Royal, caval the royal Artillery and the Red Palace. Red Palace is kind of cool, but at the end of the day, just to keep. And the problem with French compared to, you know, like Abbasid that drops off extra resources in the Imperial or Rus that has a lot of gold, there, there's no gold income for them, right? They have to trade. And when you have to trade, that means you're going to have less supply for your army and that creates a whole uh, other sets of problems. Now they have their own unique cannons, which are not that big of an impact in the game, so they don't differentiate too, too much. So when you compare them to these civs, you actively want to avoid going in Imperial even battles uh, with French against them, because they will kind of run you down. 
And if you play versus Abbasid, Abbasid can just mass spear plus like horsemen or, or camel archers. And again, you're going to have a pretty bad time. Guild uh, hall though? Eh, guild hall. It, it's not going to supply your uh, whole army in the late game. It's a bonus, but it won't hold you uh, to fight in the late game forever. So because of that, uh, you know, when we talk about Imperial, it's usually split map kind of scenario and relying on either economy to power you through or relying on uh, unique units, strong cavalry, strong range units and strong siege to kind of give you the win. And the last sieve that we will be talking about is HRE. Now, I was thinking HRE is very similar, like I said, to Avis in a French, but in my opinion, Abbasid uh, and HRE are very close to each other. My personal favorite, like I would probably, for me, I would put HRE maybe a tier higher because I love playing HRE, but it does require you to enter Imperial faster than other, than other players. So the way HRE plays is you can actually go for big fights, but you can also go for a lot of run buys. And the reason why it's a beat here is because you don't actually win with units. You don't win with, uh, you know, like like a siege push with them or man at arm push or something like that. The way you play HRE in Imperial is because you will, most of the time, right, if you play HRE correctly, you will enter Imperial way faster than your opponent. You overwhelm your opponent with the economy. So technically, HRE can beat China, actually. Because in the in Imperial, because they get the Imperial first, you get ahead on the economy, and then you put pressure, and you kind of just overwhelm your opponent early. But if the dust settles, and if players are even, HRE should not beat China or English in the late game. But like I said, if you get that tempo going, you can overwhelm your opponent super, super easy, and just beat them with like 140 workers, just plowing horsemen or knights or men-at-arms, and just sending them everywhere on the map and kind of winning that way before the map gets settled down and fully split so in that way they kind of play like abbasid they do have culverins uh they do have uh, auto repair which is great in imperial i mean they have it in every uh age but in imperial auto repair is great to repair your keeps their walls are stronger their towers are stronger the tower upgrades are cheaper so that's great for bomber towers and one of the best things about uh hre is um, you know, the relics giving them bonus gold. So if you have a good castle age going into Imperial, you're just going to have constant income of gold, which, you know, is very important when you talk about Imperial, how easy you can generally generate that gold and if you can maintain your unit production. So, yeah. And also, you know, Akin Chapel with HRE and farms just give you such insane food economy. But you need like 30, 40 stables and 30, 40 barracks to just completely overwhelm your opponent and just uh, rally them through and blast your opponents to death. You kind of want to have, the, the way you play China, for example, you kind of want to slow push, you know, and every time the enemy pushes, you kind of go back, have grenadiers forward. The way you want to play HRE is you want to have so many units coming that you only make two, three bombards and the opponent can't kill your bombards. Uh, attacking their keeps because there's so many units literally flooding and blocking their their siege from entering or their horsemen so again like i said abbasid french and hre play very similar to each other delhi is in a league of its own they just suck and these four are you know they can be played both ways they can be played like more harass based in imperial or run buys but their main thing is kind of doing a, a one big push having a death army that's super super strong and those four best sieves that have one thing in uh, in common which is the gold income even though china doesn't have any bonuses like farms for gold they can still pick up taxes which actually give you a lot of gold and the difference is their units are so strong that even if you run out of gold you can always trade and even though you have lower army supply for army uh lower supply for army your army is still so strong that you can still win so yeah if you're watching on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I will be doing another one of these with the patch hits and when, when things change, which I'm sure they will because uh, there's a bunch of changes uh, announced. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, yesterday's video should be about patch notes.
Twitch gamers, let's keep going. YouTube gamers, once again, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.